We also looked at watercolor. Now one thing that you really need to be aware of with watercolor, to make watercolor work, you must use water. It's the first word in the name of the kind of paint that it is. Water colors. You gotta have water for it to work. So we're gonna dip our brush in some water. We're gonna pick a color. I think I'm gonna go with blue this time. And we're gonna use the tip of our bristles. Now let me get in here with these bristles real quick and explain just a little bit of business. This part of your bristle is called the toe. This bigger, chunkier part is your heel. The silvery metal part is called your ferrule. Your ferrule is what holds your bristles to your handle. Your ferrule also helps your bristles to keep their shape. Whenever we paint, we try to stay up on our toes. Think of a ballerina, right? Ballerina and a nice cute little tutu and a tiara and stuff. If she comes out on a stage dancing on her heels, people are gonna laugh at that poor kid. You gotta dance up on your toes whenever you're doing watercolor. When you use a paintbrush, stay up on your toes. I'm gonna tickle, 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 add a little bit of color from my watercolor palette. Oh, that got closer, not farther. Tickle, 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 tickle. There we go, I got some color. Now I'm gonna take that color to my page, maybe down here and I'm gonna add it in. If you're trying to blend multiple colors with watercolor, it's better if you work quickly because wet color is gonna wanna blend on its own with other color that's wet. It's gonna wanna blend on its own and do cool stuff without you even really having to try very hard, which is awesome. Not that I'm that incredibly lazy, but at the same time, if it can be easy, why not let it be easy? watercolor. You wet your brush, you tickle that color, you apply color to the page. If you're blending colors, make sure you're blending wet on wet so that you get nice blends. If your first color dries before you have a chance to add in the second, you're going to end up with lines that are more harsh. Like this blend between green to blue to green, you can't even hardly see it. This blend, I just had purple blending into blue. That's a pretty nice smooth transition. This one with the green and the yellow, wah, wah, didn't really work out. This one with the orange and the yellow, wah, wah, didn't really work out again. I can actually go back in and try and fix this yellow and orange by grabbing a little bit more yellow. Yeah, and I'm just gonna go over that harsh line because I don't want it to be harsh like that. I want it to be nice and smooth. Yeah, that kind of helped it a little bit. It's a little bit smoother now. Hmm. So there's a possibility to go back into watercolor with more water or more color to help smooth things out. That's a possibility. Another thing that I covered with you guys was markers. Water-based markers like Crayola or Rose Art are great for this technique that I'm about to show you. This technique is the bomb, diggity bomb, bomb, bomb. I love it. So let me show you this biz, right? I, I'm so excited. I don't even know what color I want to use. I, I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. Go for my favorite color. Okay, so for this, you're going to need a marker. You're going to need a paintbrush that is clean, and you're going to need some water. I'm going to, gonna, I am going, I'm so excited, guys. I'm stumbling over my words. I'm going to go around the edge of my neurographic shape right here. The great thing about these markers and the awful thing about these markers is that they are water-based. That means that if the ink gets wet after you've applied it to something, that ink is going to start bleeding, running, transferring to other things. It's going to move around if it gets wet. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of marker and a paintbrush that's wet, but not too wet. Because you know too much water will kill your paper. It'll enable your brush to eat a hole straight through your paper and that's not what we want. So I'm going to dip it in the water. I'm going to kiss the lip of the dish, meaning I'm going to, let me see if I can zoom in over here. Yes, I'm going to kiss the lip of the dish with my brush, meaning I'm dipping it in the water and I'm kissing the lip of the dish to get the excess water off. Then burp, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to start applying water to the marker to help it move, bleed, and walk around. 
if there are edges that I think are too harsh, I can go back into them and try and soften them up and hush them up. Sometimes colors just need to hush. Sometimes. Other times they just need to be loud and bold. But for this assignment, since it's all about mindfulness and helping you find your center and helping you find peace, let's try to keep things nice and peaceful and calm. So yeah, that's another way that you can use markers. It's a super fun technique. I hope that this has been super duper informative for you. Thanks so much for tuning in.